you want to talk about that a little bit, we'll just we'll just zoom in on it. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to do your pregame, you guys work it out with Darren, and then uh, we'll go from there.
What do you want to uh, pregame? What do you want to talk about? Talk about Collier for uh, Peckway. He's averaging 21 points a game. He's got nine threes on the year. And he scored. <laughs> rotation like I have an outdoor pair of high cops right <laughs> I have an indoor pair I have a pair in waiting right so when my outdoor pair is shot my indoor go to outdoor and my in waiting go to indoor I got that all going on right now I just break out the the basketball ones for when I do a game otherwise they stay in the box yeah or I'll wear like the ones I have on tonight I'll wear them like every so often for a football game too <clears throat> It's only mine's only Jordan and Kobe's though. I don't buy like LeBron's or anything. I have a pair of yeah. uh, I have a pair of Giannis on the Kumpos too. Kid's big. Yeah, he is. We are live from Lancaster Mennonite High School tonight for a Section 5 showdown between the Lancaster Mennonite Blazers, 3-3 three three overall, taking on the Peckway Valley Braves, 1-2 overall. 
Mennonite with a two and one record in section play. Peckway Valley comes in tonight one and one overall in section play. Eric Thomas and Warren Goodling with you here tonight. Thanks for joining us for the third straight night this week yep. of some LL Hoops basketball here on our YouTube page and also LLHoops.com. Well, Coach, this is a critical matchup here. Lancaster Mennonite has played a pretty tough schedule. They have not beaten any of the three powerhouses on their schedule yet in, in uh, Catholic, Columbia, or Lampeter Strasburg. So they're three and three right now. Peckway Valley, they had Columbia the other night. Did not fare too well in that game. Both these teams are looking to try to stay afloat, not only in the section race, but this is a pretty big game going forward here for both teams the rest of the way. Yeah, this is uh, game seven for Mennonite, so they're trying to uh, use some of their adversity, uh, losing some games to try to mold themselves into a little bit of better team. And, you know, Peckway Valley is now playing their fourth game in five nights. Yeah, that's, we'll, we'll see what effect that has on them. Let's talk first about Peckway Valley because this team has Devin Collier, 1,000-point score, just went over 1,000 points this week against Columbia and uh, went over the 1,000-point mark for his career against Columbia in that game. 21 points a game. We're going to see again for the second straight night two of the highest-scoring individuals in the LL. Cole Fisher for Mennonite, 19-1 a game. Devin Collier, 21 a game. How do you see the matchup here, and what does Mennonite have to do to, to keep Collier neutralized? Well, it's going to be interesting to see who guards who, okay? Are the two high scorers going to guard each other? That would be an interesting interesting matchup that usually doesn't happen though so uh we'll see how that shakes out but uh i i think number one you have to stay in front of uh collier and and you have you have some help with some big guys behind you for mennonite and for uh peckway valley their job with fisher is is when he penetrates they're going to have to do a great job on having good help, but also being able to get a, a defensive rebound. Mennonite also has a good one-two punch with Fisher, but also Camden Hurst, 18.6 points a game. Had 22 the other night against Lampeter, or, uh, Lancaster Country Day. And listen, they're three and three, but they're not three and three because the offense hasn't been there. They're three and three because they played a pretty tough schedule, but this offense, almost 58 points a game. They've made almost 100 field goals already, 25 threes. Yep. Their defensive side of the ball, they're giving up one more point than what they score, though. Well, I, I'm, they're probably playing a pretty fast tempo, and uh, they're, they played some good offensive teams, too. Again, back to Camden Hurst, he has nine threes on a year, and he's 29 for 34 from the foul line. So he's, he's really been uh, very good so far beginning of the season. Yeah, it really has complimented Fisher very well. Starting lineups for each side tonight for Peckway Valley. They'll be in the all red as you see them on your screen there. It'll be Collier averaging 21 a game. And as Coach mentioned, nine three-pointers this season. His three games this season, he scored 21, 22, and 20. And he went over the 1,000-point mark, as we mentioned, against Columbia earlier in the season. Luke Pfeiffer, the 5'9 guard, averaging 7.6 points a game. He's hit six threes on the season. Josh Jarvis, 5'10 senior, averaging just under four a game. Antonio Lazar at 5'8, the senior averaging almost 10 and a half a game. And Nevin Stoltfus, the 5'11 guard, the juniors averaging 12.3 points a game. The thing to notice about Peckway Valley, they are not very tall at all. They're a very short team. Yeah, I think their tallest starter might be 6'2". So we'll see how they hang on there on the offense and defensive rebounding. For Mennonite at three and three, they're two and one in the section. Seth Buckwater is third season. He's 28 and 29 overall. So he's looking to square his record as head coach. They were seven and three in the section last year. Already two and one. They were 11 and 13 overall. They're already three and three. They went to the district quarterfinals, so a successful season. But they really need to get on track here and stay above 500 the rest of the way. Cole Fisher will start the 6'2 seniors, averaging 19.1 a game, and he's sitting on 882 career points, so he's closing in on a thousand for his career as well. Jaden McFadden, the 5'9 senior, he had 17 in the loss against Lampeter Strasburg earlier this season, and uh, he's a 5'9 senior. It'll be Declan Hirsch. 5'10", junior, averaging four points a game. Camden Hurst, the 6'1", sophomore, is averaging 18.6. And Big John Ritchie will round out the starting five at the 6'4", senior, averaging 3.1 points a game. You notice about Mennonite, though, good free throw shooting team. They shoot 71% as a team. And we mentioned the height disadvantage, but they've also got David Weaver, who we expect to see tonight. He's 6'6". Six -six. got Zach Coriel, who's six foot. This is going to be a problem for Peckway Valley yeah. here tonight. Shorter, they got a lot of spunk, but this height's going to be a problem yeah, for them all night long. We'll see how they do it. They'll probably play some zone tonight. They'll probably uh, sit back a little bit in the zone 
and, and see if they can, you know, get the positioning to get some rebounds and try to use some of their quickness to get to any kind of loose ball. But it's going to be interesting to see uh, David Weaver play. He's a sophomore, and he's got great size. I was watching him shoot. He's got a nice, he's a left-hander, which usually presents a problem when you're an inside player. And, and he uh, had a nice uh, shooting touch from the perimeter. So let's see how he develops uh, tonight and also in his, as the season goes on. They're introducing uh, senior parents, it looks like, here tonight. So game's going to be just a briefly delayed here before they tip things off. It's a very short roster of upperclassmen, so this won't be that long of a ceremony before we tip off. Go back to what Thad Rittenhouse, the head coach of Peckway Valley, said. He's 12-57 and 57 in four seasons so far. He called last year a huge step with this team winning eight games. They're at one and two where they were now early in 2021. They finished eight and 14. They were four and six in the section. Uh, but he did say that his team is fast and can shoot. But talk a little bit about, because you've been on that side of the ball where you're, you know, you, one season bleeds into the other. You win eight games. You might not look at that as an overall success in terms of record, but that's a good stepping stone for this team to take last year into this year. Yeah, it's, it's a good stepping stone for him to take because in those eight games that they won, they had eight celebrations that season. And they probably had a couple games. They probably walked out of the gym thinking that, you know, had we won those games, we might have won 12 or 13 games. The other thing that he's done is he got a lot more youth basketball involvement going on at the Peckway Valley level, so at the school district. So he has more, just talking to him tonight, he has more young kids playing than ever before, and that's going to be a good sign for him in the future. You talk about the smaller schools. Sometimes they have the smaller pool to, to get kids out yeah. of. It's tougher to build those programs. It's tougher to build those youth programs. And, you know, it's, it, it is what it is, but it seems like he's got this on the right trajectory, at least where they sit right now. Right, and, you, and he's looking to get that one class where he has three good players, and the class behind him, he has three good players. And then if he can start getting that, then he's going to have some success. For Peckway and Mennonite, they've both played Columbia, who right now sits atop the section. And Columbia has already notched a win over Trinity as well outside of LL play. They had four players in double figures against Peckway on Wednesday night, and they also had 24 field goals. They were 13 of 18 from the free throw line. We know how good that Columbia team is. There is no shame in losing to them, but these two teams took different paths against them. Peckway could not really hang on with them. Mennonites losses to Catholic, Lampeter, Strasburg, and Columbia. They lost to Columbia by three, blown out by 32 to Catholic, and hammered by Lampeter, Strasburg, two by 20. What do you see in that schedule? What do you see with those three tough games that they've had problems with? Uh, well, I, I believe he's trying to fit some new pieces in this, this year with Fisher, and he's got Fisher and Horst, and I think when he gets out of these six games, looking at seven, eight, nine, ten, he's looking to find the chemistry he needs to move forward. And that just means, okay, what are we good at on offense? Okay, what do, aren't we good at offense? So we get rid of that, we put something else in, or we focus on this more. And then defensively, what can we hang our hat on defensively? So those are the things you, you know, usually you have 10 games to figure that out. This year you might only have six. Heard us talk about it last night. We talked about it on Wednesday night. The fact that these teams don't have the, they don't really know where they're at right now as far as their their level of play because of the shortened season. We'll see how that plays out here tonight. We're going to step aside for tonight's national anthem, and then after that, we'll tip things off here from Lancaster Mennonite High School. Sounds like we're going to do the lineups here to the crowd. So we'll get the anthem here in a minute or two. Yeah, sometimes it's amazing uh, after you play like 10 games that you go look at your practice plan. It's a little bit different than it was at the beginning of the season because you, you get the feedback when you play the games. So you think, oh, we're going to be good at this. And all of a sudden, you're not good at that. And then you have to find something else that emerges that you're good at. So. Uh, it's, it's interesting seeing that. And I'm sure both of these teams are going through that right now. You know, and we're hearing a lot from the coaches in the, in the league, too. It's been tough to really install anything. I mean, you're, you're going 
night to night to night yeah. playing these games, trying to get as many as you possibly can get in. And really, in a normal season where you would say, okay, if we're playing three games in a week, that's too much. And that might, you know, our team might get worn down. You really have to get these games in now yeah. because you don't know what's going to happen in a month. And you need to have as many as you possibly can before that cutoff. But that, the downside of that is it cuts into practice time. It cuts into being able to install stuff. It cuts yeah. into being able to scout teams properly. This is a whole different world that we're still yeah, kind of going through right here it, with sports. It really is. The big, the big comment you hear from coaches is we just haven't had time to practice. And, and that, is, that is a big problem. And we know some of them practice during the shutdown and stuff too on the down low. So that's, that's not a no question that some teams were able to somehow sneak away and get some practice in but for the most part they weren't and their first one that they were able to have is when they got back on the floor with the teams yep. after january started yep. so it is what it is you got mennonite at three and three peckway valley at one and two and this is a all important and all important matchup here tonight as right off the jump we're going to see this the height difference here collier at 510 is going to go right up against richie Richie at six foot four. He is a stocky kid. You can see his size right there. And we are ready to go here from Lancaster Mennonite High School. Glad to have you along here tonight, this game. Big thanks to the staff here at Mennonite as well. Originally, we were supposed to be at Warwick and Lebanon. That game was postponed due to COVID issues. And Mennonite was able to step up and accommodate us at the last minute. So we thank them for helping us out to get this game underway. It's Peckway Valley controlled. It's Jarvis off the tip. Richie out front guarding him. Then a night man to man defense. Jarvis, nice bounce pass underneath. A little too strong there for Laser. And Mennonite with it. This is Hurst. Finds his running mate, Fisher, all the way to the bucket. No. Too strong. And Richie and Fisher will tie up Jarvis. Jump ball. The arrow is going to favor Mennonite. Okay, we got an out-of-bounds play right away, and we've seen a lot of teams get, get scoring situations right on the out-of-bounds play. Up top it goes to Hirsch. Hirsch now finds Fisher all the way to the bucket, yep. lays it up and in. There's yep. Cole Fisher's first bucket of the night. Well, he made a nice move to the baseline. He faked in, going to the inside and came, swung it through the baseline drive, and there was not quick enough help there. Uh, our question answered as it's Jaden McFadden who's matched up on Collier is all the way to the rack yep. and laying it in is Nevin Stoltzfus. He's fouled. Yep. And we'll go to the line to complete the three-point play. And that was a set play where they were going to reverse the ball for a back screen, but he was able to get a backdoor cut and a layup. So Stoltzfus made a nice read on that going backdoor and getting that layup. Fouls on Camden Hurst is first. Free throw by Stoltzfus is good. 50% free throw shooter on yep. the season. And, you know, Peckway's playing man-to-man. -man. Fisher. Collier staying away from Fisher defensively. He yeah. tips that one right to Richie, though. Hirsch on the drive, yep. hands it off to Hurst. Three-point jumper is off the mark. Richie had the ball momentarily, and then an effort by Hirsch, a little too aggressive. He's out of bounds. It'll go back yep. to Peckway with yep, 655 to go here in the first. Yep. That time, uh, Mennonite is running their uh, four-round-one motion offense with Richie being the postman. Let's see if uh, Peckway comes down, runs a set play here right now. Looks like they're trying to. There's another backdoor cut. Right to Collier, yep. nice job getting to the bucket yep. and laying and, in. And, and that was probably a set play because Mennonite does like to deny the wing. And they cleared the, the help side out to get a backdoor cut. Three point lead for Peckway early on here. Take by Hurst all the way yeah. to the bucket. Yep. Nice, nice strong drive. A good spacing there by the Mennonite offense. And he had the one-on-one -on -one situation he was looking for. Jarvis. Pfeiffer, and that's Jarvis again. Way short on the three-point attempt. McFadden the rebound. Pushing it with Hurst all the way to the, yep. the rack, and he yep. lays it up and in again. Now there's a, there's a point guard play right there by McFadden. Got the ball in the outlet pass. Took two dribbles. Saw the cutter, threw it ahead, and for the finish was Hurst. Jarvis out to Pfeiffer. His three-pointer is good. Yeah, good he equalizer there. Oh, he shot that with really a lot of confidence. See, at least early on here, that Mennonite's the one playing with the faster tempo. 
That's out of bounds. It'll stay with men. Yeah, they, they definitely are. I mean, they're, they're looking to spread you out and get to the basket. All right, now they're going to go a little bit smaller. So let's see if they open up their offense. Scrum on the floor as Fisher comes away with the loose ball. Can't connect on that one. Lazar had the rebound there. Jarvis, another all over him defensively. They find Collier. Collier's only had the one touch so far. He has scored on that yep. opportunity. Yeah, Mennonite's focus is ball pressure and deny that one pass away. No look pass underneath yeah. to Pfeiffer and he lays it in. And what Great happened that Collier. time is somebody didn't have their man, okay? Coach says, all right, when you go in the game, know who you're guarding. That Fisher. didn't happen. Pull up three by Fisher, tipped out of there by yeah. Shell. Shell checked in at the last whistle, number 10. Lazar all the way to the nice rack. Nice drive, really nice drive. And both teams are running up and down. And they are, it's a six point lead for Peckway. He looks sharp here okay. to start. That is out of bounds, it's gonna stay with Mennonite. Tipped out of there by Collier. Yeah, now uh, Peckway did a nice job of getting some team defense there when Fisher was trying to go to baseline. They took the baseline off, trapped him, and forced forced a, th a throw out of bounds. Here's an out of bounds play. The ball screen. Hurst tied up, spins around, yep. jumper good. Yep, good body control. He had the layup taken away, he pivoted it to the inside and made the jump shot. He's looked sharp early on. He's got six of the eight points for yeah, Mennonite he's a, here. He's a good looking athlete. Stoltzfus. Guarded by Fisher, trying to go right by him. Off the window, no. Jarvis gets the rebound. Tried to find Collier, but it was knocked away by yeah. McFadden. Jump ball. Arrow's gonna favor Peckway Valley yep. with 4.12 to go in the first. So you can see in the game plan, Peckway is very much aware of the opportunity to go back door. When they have good spacing, give a little ball fake, come out to the three-point line, plant your foot and go. Inbound from Jarvis. Dangerously close to that five seconds. Stoltzfus has to go in the backcourt to get it. Fisher all over him. We approach four minutes to go here in the first. It's a four-point lead for Peckway Valley. Trying to square its record here is Jarvis. Good defense by Shell, yeah. and he throws it right to McFadden. Here come the Blazers. McFadden over to Fisher, pinned up on that sideline, kept it in bounds. Hurst, Fisher. Now Hirsch will get a touch here as they get it off to McFadden. Nice take by McFadden. Yeah. Great Good. defense by Stoltzfus, yeah, Stoltzfus too. Stoltzfus blocked that cleanly. Good no call by the official, really. This is what Rittenhouse, you got to think, was talking about, though, too, about taking that next step. They come out, they play these games tougher. There's a lot more confidence in this team, you would think, from a season ago. Fisher. Oh, they're, they're in their battle. And, and you know, like I, I'm thinking maybe they're going to play a little zone tonight, but they played man-to-man, -man and they are getting after it. Yeah, you thought with the height they might. You know, and, and Lazar is, is, is all over Fisher, working him hard, trying not to give him any openings. Hurst shook loose again. His yeah. jumper is on well, point early. Got that medium jump shot. He doesn't have to go all the way. He's capable of pulling up. And that's what he did very well on, on, on a couple of these drives so far. And these aren't long twos either. He's taking high percentage shots, but man, his shot looks good early on. As Collier drives, lost the handle. McFadden again, who's playing good defense here in the yep. first. And he had some help there. Here, here we go. Hurst, oh, he, yeah, he got thought he had a trailer and yeah, Collier did. was the one. Yeah. Jarvis with 2.55 to go. Now Collier. Collier on the drive, little high dribble that time. Yep, they got him for the carry. As you can see, Collier and Fisher are getting uh, the defensive focus from both teams right now. Both teams very much aware when they get the ball to have some help one pass away. Down at 2.40 to go here in the first quarter. It's a two-point lead for PB. Yep. There's right. Fisher. Yep. Really set that up on his own. Well, they had a, a, yeah, they had a zipper cut on the far side, and Fisher was on the weak side, and then he when the ball reversal, he cut through, and there was a, there was a, what they call an elevator screen 
He went through two guys. As soon as he went through, they closed it and enabled him to be wide open. Jarvis. Well set, well done on the set play. As McFadden goes up into the crowd. See, and that's what sets Buck Buckwater did. He knew his, uh, his star was getting some defensive focus, so he ran a really good set play, and they executed it perfectly. David Weaver is in the game for Mennonite number zero, and coming in for Peckway Valley is Gary Bad Warrior. Jarvis has it off the inbound here with 2.10 to go. Now 2.10 to go. Lazar. Stoltzfus, nice curl by him to the rack. That yeah. was, rim was pulled down. That should have been a goal 10. Looked like that might have altered the ball there, but. Yeah, they definitely had somebody's hand in the net. And McFadden on the drive is fouled, so he'll go to the line to shoot two. It's a shame we don't have the replay for the officials because it looked like that rim completely altered that attempt. Yeah, it looked like it might have been going down there for, and I think uh, Rick Hartle said it was incidental. He said nobody grabbed a net. That was on Bad Warrior, his first. McFadden, a 50% free throw shooter, hits the front end. And, and that's what you like to see your point guard be able to make the foul shots. And that's a good start for him tonight. Second one by McFadden, yep. also good. There you go. Call your back in for Peckway Valley with 151 to play. Now this Collier. is a big 151 for Peckway right now. They have to stay, you know, keep this game where they want it. Collier, Jarvis, Pfeiffer, Bad Warrior, and Stoltzfus for Peckway Valley. 140 to play here. They trail it now by three. A mini run here by Mennonite. Collier off the screen. Well, they do a good job of trapping him. You got the big guy, yeah. Weaver, in there, too. There's that height we talked about in the pregame with Weaver, Richie. You're able to throw him in there on that double team. That just makes it a nightmare for these shorter guards. Yeah, that was that was a that, was that a triple team or a double team? It, it seemed like a triple team because of the big guy in there. That was on David Shell. That's his first, team second. 91 seconds to go here in the first. Peckway trying to tie it up here on this possession. Collier will take the three. Rebound McFadden. Nice move right by yeah, Collier. Yeah, it was. High off the glass and he got yeah. it to fall. Yeah, a little inside out dribble and finish with his right hand. Good body control to finish that. And this is what I was talking about for Peckway to stay involved in this game on there. And that's going to help him right there. Gary, bad warrior with his second three of the season. A high arcing three. Well, that shot looked good too. Weaver, nice seal, and he banks it in. Okay. So they didn't waste time throwing it to the big guy on the box, did they? Not at all. The four round one offense, he, they came right down. He had position. They threw it right in. McFadden, check that shell with the strip. Finds Fisher, Fisher, nice move around Collier, but he couldn't get it to fall. Got his own rebound, can't get that to fall. Gets his own rebound again through three defenders, and he scores and fouled. Yep. Well, second, third effort. Cole Fisher with seven here in the first. Yep. Fouls on. Pfeiffer, that's his first and the team third. Fisher, a 74% free throw shooter. So get some substitutions worked out here for Peckway Valley. Pfeiffer's gonna take a seat and Lazar is back out there. Lazar, Jarvis, Collier, Stoltzfus and Bad Warrior. It's McFadden, Shell, Weaver, Hirsch and Fisher at the line for the three-point opportunity here. All right, let's see what uh, Peckway Valley wants to do on the offensive end. If they're going to go for a sh one shot with 32 seconds to go, or they're going to come down and just take the first available good shot they have. Fisher, and he misses that, that one. 
Bad Warrior the rebound. 30 seconds to go in the quarter. It's a six point lead for Mennonite. Jarvis harassed by McFadden. Use that arm to a little separation there. 19 seconds to go. Jarvis right by McFadden and he traveled. Okay, yep. You know, I think uh, Weaver had something to do with that because he came over in the help position and and that's a big guy to try to shoot a layup over. Even in a game where they have the decisive height advantage, he can just be a factor by merely being out there. I no, mean, he, he's there's no question. Score. Okay, yeah. right now on the, against this zone, they're now Peckway's in the zone. So Weaver can catch the ball in the middle. He can get an offensive rebound. He can screen. That's a lot sure. of things he can do down there in that, against that zone. Fisher had a good look at it there to end the quarter. Mennonite trailed most of the way. Second half of that first quarter, they really put the gas down. They take a six-point lead, 21 to 15. You're watching live coverage of Section 5 basketball on LOHoops.com. Parents, if you have children who are driving or getting ready to drive, Lewis Agency is here to help. Call the Stephen Edward Lewis Agency in Millersville to find out how they keep your costs low and help teach your children how to drive safer with the Nationwide Smart Ride Program. This program includes accident forgiveness, so if your new driver does have an accident, you won't lose your insurance or suffer an expensive rate surcharge. Please contact the Stephen Edward Lewis Agency for additional information at 717-872-2466. Well, one quarter in the books here. We saw a little bit of everything in that quarter. We saw Peckway get out to a nice start. Yeah. We saw them play a little bit slower pace than what we expected. We saw Mennonite really try to run and gun, and they got their legs under them, and then they were able to pull away there at the end of the first quarter. Yeah, and we saw both teams run some set plays that were very successful at doing that. We saw the big guy catch the ball down low and make a nice post move. Uh, so there's a lot of good things going on, and they're, both of these teams are very confident offensively. They're not afraid to shoot it. Yeah, it sure seems that way. This could be... This could be another one that comes down to the wire. If you missed last night's game with Cacalico and LS, go watch the replay of that one on our YouTube page. That was a lot of fun. Low scoring game, but man, was that game fun last night, especially for early season. As Shell and Mennonite will start things here in the second with Hurst, Fisher, Weaver, Shell, and yep. that one knocked down by Shell. Yeah, Shell was wide open on that, but there were some uh, Fisher and Weaver were inside working for a position, and that sucked the defense in, and Shell was able to get wide open on the wing. Jarvis, now Lazar. Nice so cut to Stolfus. Yeah, that was the back door again. Jarvis, they go bad warrior, shuffled his feet. Yep, that's a good call. And again, I give credit to Weaver for that because he was, again, coming over, and he's, in, in, he's a big uh, defender in there. Quickly down the floor, Shell wasting no time, hangs, and he's fouled. He just got that ball and attacked that zone, huh? Didn't even let him get set up. They're going to sub out yeah. Weaver for Richie, and they're going to bring in, looks like McFadden is going to come back in for. Yeah, after the first foul shot. Yep. They were a little anxious getting in the game here. Shell has not attempted a free throw this season. which through seven games is kind of hard to believe. Good balance by Mennonite there in that first two. I mean, Weaver scored, Hurst scored, Fisher, McFadden, Shell. Everybody got involved. No, Shell they, got his field goal here in the no, second. No, I thought McFadden made some good point guard plays. You know, Fisher's good to score. Hurst is good to score. But they're getting contributions from a lot of people right now. And Shell knocks down both. Yep. He's got five, and we get the sub in for the shooter, which was Shell. So McFadden is back for Mennonite. Okay, now we have an 11-point lead here all of a sudden. Yeah, that got away from Peckway Valley pretty quick it, there. It that did. They had some turnovers down here on the offensive end. And they haven't gotten some easy buckets that they got earlier in the game. Yeah, hand check foul they were called. That was on Hirsch, I believe. Yep, you know, and the referee can be consistent on that call. If he calls that early, he's probably going to keep that game under control. If he lets that go early, it's going to be harder to call that in the fourth quarter. Was Declan Hirsch who had the foul called on him, so that's his first. Team fourth for Mennonite. No real foul trouble yet. Still got 7.02 to go here in the second quarter, though. That one tossed over to the sideline yep. for Pfeiffer and thrown out of bounds. Yeah, a little confusion there. Are we going to go back door? Are we popping out? 
And on the wing there, if, if you make a back a backdoor fake, you almost have to go because you can't fake. That time he faked his passer out that time. Hurst, nice give right back to McFadden who kicks it out to Fisher. Nice step through by Fisher. A lot of contact there and away the shot off. It's on the floor, so Fisher and Mennonite will inbound. All right, a box set and the out-of-bounds play. Against the zone, okay, now it's a 2-3 zone. Instead of a 3-2, it's a 2-3. Fadden, Hurst. And they rotate uh, got the guards going into the high post. Nice, nice shot. Declan Hurst knocking that three down. Yes, he did. And well, you know, he has six threes on the year, so he's out there for a reason against his own. And you mentioned the rotation. Hirsch was the one that time. He's making the defensive play on the other end here against Pfeiffer. What a job by Hirsch yeah. on both ends. Man, he. Yep. Shakes loose and gets the three over there, makes the defensive yep. effort down on the other end. Big, big defensive effort. It's going to be a timeout called by Seth Buckwater and Mennonite. 30-second timeout. That'll be the first charge timeout to the Blazers. Tonight's game brought to you by Brute uh, Apparel, Brute Athletic Apparel. Tonight's webcast sponsored by Brute Athletic Apparel. Your local manufacturer of custom sublimated uniforms. Want your team to stand out from... The competition, choose Brute, 100% custom, 100% local. Visit Brute.com for more information. That's B-R-U-T-E.com for more info. 29 to 15, Mennonite has sort of seized charge of this thing. And they right now look like the more polished team between these two. Yeah. This is, the Peckway team is very young. I mean... Jarvis and Lazar are seniors, but the other three in the and Piper's a senior, but the other two, Stoltzfus and Collier, and Bad Warrior, who's their, one of their key subs, all juniors. So yeah, they're they're doing some good stuff. They're they're just being uh, right now. They're being hurt hard on the boards and also defensively. Mennonite has shut them down here recently. McFadden, that was Fisher who missed the first try, and they exploit that size advantage inside with. Richie, another jump ball call, and the arrow's going to favor Peckway Valley. You know, and Peckway Valley's in a guessing game right now on defense. Should we play a 3-2? Should we play a 2-3? Should we play a man-to-man? -man? They're sort of going back and forth in all of them, and they haven't quite found their niche defensively yet. When they go man, I, I would be stunned. I know Hurston and Fisher need their touches. I'd be stunned if they don't start going inside more as Jarvis – can't connect on that one. Hurst the rebound. Yeah. Tipped out of bounds that time by uh, Cole McAvoy. He's in there. He's another underclassman, a sophomore. But, you know, Peckway's playing basically with five guards. I mean, that's they're playing with five guards. And now, they're, now they're in their 3-2. Fisher, and they find Hirsch again on that side. Can't hit that one. Look at the muscle by Jarvis to pull that rebound down. It's not the modern five-guard look either, like the Golden State Warriors five-guard right, look. This right. is because they don't have height. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you see so many of those teams now that go with that undersized and like they're big as a six-seven swingman, but that, the, the case here with Peckway is they just don't have the height they don't on have the roster. Height. And so what they're doing, they do play a high post person, but that that's a guard and they'll run some shuffle cuts off of him and some back doors and They'll get various screens off of that. Pfeiffer, nice step through by Pfeiffer, but he's fouled. Actually, they're going to call an offensive foul on Peckway. So it's going to go back to Mennonite with 5.14 to play in the half. That was on McAvoy, his first. That is the sixth on PV. So they're approaching bonus territory here. Next one will be a one and one shell. All right, quick touch, and that one's poked out of there by Lazar, but right back comes Hurst. Hurst out to that corner. There's Fisher camping out there, can't connect. Fight for the rebound. Oh, he just went behind the back too yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, he missed the open guy in front of him that Fisher time. Fisher, yep. and one again. Yep. Boy, this kid is something else. Yep, he's certainly, you know, he's a good shooter, but he can really get to the basket. Finds ways to get to the basket. 
And that time he saw the gap and there was no hesitation there. There is so much, and you mentioned it just a minute ago with the rotation that Mennonite has. There is so much movement on their offense that I think when these guys get in the open floor, I think that benefits them. They're always thinking about a cutter. They're always thinking about a right. pass. They're thinking about getting to the bucket. And, and they, they, they slash their guards to the high post against the zone because the guard can make a pass from there, can shoot from there, and in some cases, uh, Fisher can drive from there. And they, they just do such a good job with their offense when they get set up. And they, again, they bring the big out to guard up high as Jarvis got tied up there by Weaver. And we get a foul. This is going to go, I believe, against Fisher. Actually, it's going to go against McFadden. That'll be his first, and that'll be the fifth on Mennonite here in the first half. Still really no danger for them. It's 4.41 to play here, and they got five fouls. Good inbound to Collier, who's been very quiet in this game. Well, he's gotten a lot of defensive focus. That time he made a nice drive to the basket. And that's what he's going to have to do, find ways to get to the foul line. It's going to be on Weaver, his first. Yeah, if the shots aren't there, you want to create your own opportunities, and that's exactly what he did there. But they're definitely up on his shooting, and he's going to have some driving angles if we have good spacing, if they have good spacing on offense. Peckway team only shoots it at 57% from the charity stripe this season. Collier makes both. Yeah. Nice looking stroke there. Two good shots. Hurst, and he'll play pitch and catch with his partner. They dump it inside to Weaver, yeah, and he just that. sat there and forever and finally falls. That's what you call a soft touch, huh? I didn't know if that was going to make it up over the rim. It just crawled up over there. Looked like it was going to sit there till March. Yeah. Lazar, nice drive, but he strips. Out of bounds, back to Mennonite. Declan Hirsch is back in. They're going to give Cole Fisher a breather here. And a timeout's going to be called by Thad Rittenhouse and Peckway Valley with 4.12 to go here in the first half. It'll be a full timeout. That'll be their first charge timeout. And we want to remind you that tonight's Broadcast is brought to you by HL Team Sales. HL Team Sales provides uniforms, team shops, and other clothing equipment to schools and teams throughout the Lancaster, Lebanon, League, York, and Berks regions. Contact HL at 717-392-3010 or online at www.hlteamsales.com. Our third night of basketball here tonight, and I've actually done four games. This is my fourth game this week from Tuesday night on. I'm I'm about ready to <laughs> ingest a pot well, of coffee in my veins. And and this is Peckway's fourth game in five nights, so there you go. I feel you, Peckway. I, I'm with you all the way on that one. <laughs> yep. It's going to be great tomorrow to just lay back and watch Kentucky lose another game. Andy Hur's watching our, our broadcast tonight. I'm sure he chuckled at that comment. 34-17 Mennonite in front of Peckway with 4.12 to go here in the first half. You start to think about what Peckway can do here. I mean, we're getting to that point now. We're asking what they can do to get back in this. Collier created his own bucket opportunity there. We're, we might have to see more of that if they're going to try yeah, to get back and, in Yeah, and I think that you're going to have to clear a side out for him or give him space. And this is one way to get him a bucket. You get some transition, get some transition going. Now, he missed that one, but he's going to make some of those. See, he's getting a double team when he gets the ball anywhere down near the basket. Trying to go underneath the Stoltzfus. That was cut off. And another travel called on Peckway. That's their seventh turnover here in the first half with 3.45 to play. Yeah, well, the Mennonite defense is a big factor right now. They've done a nice job of pressuring the ball, getting some pressure on the one pass away, and then also getting that help side. Shell trying to go across the court there, and that was tipped with the defense that time by Peckway. Nice pass underneath the Lazar, but... He couldn't catch up to it, and it's back to Mennonite with 3.31 to play. Right idea. Might have taken another dribble or two to shorten that pass. And now they're in a 2-3 zone. Now, I would highly suggest using the high post here. They can definitely get that advantage yeah, if they want it. Down in there, big guy, and there you go, right up, right up. All right, skip pass, all right, that's all right, too. McFadden off the yep, window there you go. gets the roll. See, you know, when you have a big guy that can throw the skip pass, 
it gets the guards excited because they're willing to feed him the ball if they know that he'll find the open man if he doesn't have what he wants. Lazar with 2.52 to play in the half. Peckway desperately in need of a bucket here down 36-17. This is getting close to yep. mercy rule territory here if they don't hurry yeah, up and get some they, shots. They've only got two points this quarter, but there's a big shot. Big shot by Stoltzfus, the three-pointer. Okay. So if you're a shooter for Peckway, set a back screen and shape up, and you might be open. Yeah, good defense there again by McAvoy. He gets it right back. A lot of contact there, but no call. That one just thrown to keep it in bounds. Collier can't catch up to it. Here comes Hurst. Hurst, nice move to the bucket, yep. and he lays it in off yep. balance. Yep, he avoided the contact, kept his balance, and finished that shot. Real nice. I'm impressed with him. 18-point margin for Mennonite here with 2.05 to play in the half. All that effort by Peckway in the last couple of seconds, and then Hurst is able to do the damage again. Jarvis knocks that one down. Two threes in a row for this team. Jarvis' is first bucket of the night. Again, uh, you know, simple basketball, reverse the ball, and that's what happened. They got an open shot on the ball reversal. Hirsch. Boy, trading threes here, and Hirsch just did a couple of big ones in this first half. And He's got six. Yep, see, once again, a Mennonite guard got the ball at the high post and looked opposite for the shooter. Bingo. 90 seconds to go in the half. 41-23 Mennonite. A lot of dribbling there by Jarvis. Gets it out to Stoltzfus. 80 seconds to go in the half. Jarvis looks like Peckway is content to maybe go the whole way here, wasting the rest of the clock. Actually, they'll fire that one. Jarvis, no. Lazar the rebound. Nice rebound by Lazar. Stripped. That time by Hirsch, out of bounds off of Lazar, and it's going to go back to Mennonite. Pfeiffer will come back in, and Fisher will come back in for Mennonite. And they'll sub Weaver out for Ritchie. Yep. Now, not a lot of teams in this section have this size either. I mean, they've played a tough schedule, but, you know, it's... No, I mean, they have some nice size. They have some... I, I, I'm impressed with their... They're perimeter players. Uh, McFadden's done a nice job at point. Uh, Declan Hirsch is a shooter. Fisher can score any way possible. Tried to split that double team there and he got fouled. Now after tonight for Mennonite, it does not necessarily get easier. They got Peckway tonight, their next game on Monday night is at Trinity, non-league. Trinity tonight's in a dogfight with Middletown up in mid-pen country. So they step up right back up and play a tough team coming up on Monday night. Actually, that'll be Tuesday night. Yeah, but they're, they're playing that team for a reason. They're, you know, they want to be ready for the postseason. Collier the other way. Yep, again. Get Collier in the open floor, and he's tough to guard. Actually, that is Monday night, I beg your pardon, the 25th. That one off the mark, and Bad Warrior the rebound. Best name you'll hear us call out all season long, Gary Bad Warrior. Deep three by Collier off the mark yep. with 23 seconds to go. 41-25. After the Trinity game, though, Susquehannock and then... Anvil Cleona, they got Kennerdale non-league. So they're, they're putting the non-league games on the schedule to test them. Halifax will be a good yeah. non-league test for them. These two teams will rematch on February 1st. And then Mennonite will close with Columbia and Lancaster Country Day on the 9th and the 11th. So yep. they're actually done the 11th. And that's they may look to add games because you can play up to the 26th for district games yeah. to count. So higher win percentage might result in a higher seed. Is Fisher? No. Got his own rebound. He came right back and bounced to get it in the contact, and he'll go back to the line again with 4.9 seconds to play in the half. Yeah, yeah, Fisher just finds so many different ways to score. He's relentless, driving to the basket. He can rebound, he can shoot it. See, and I bring that up about the schedule. We don't know what's going to happen with the LL tournament yet either. So, remains to be seen but you will be allowed to, I am sure, 
schedule games if you're not involved in that tournament up until the 26th to make sure you get enough in for district. So, and that schedule, of course, done with the normalcy in mind that they would have played all their games to this date and have to be done by the 11th as Jarvis will throw it up at the buzzer. And that is how the first half will end. Well, dominating first five minutes or so by Peckway Valley, and then Mennonite from that point on is taking control of this thing. Yep. They lead it 43 to 25 here at the half. Tonight's game brought to you by Pat Klein of State Farms. Special thanks to Pat Klein of State Farms for sponsoring LL Hoops live streaming. Give Pat a call for all your insurance needs at 717-284-3107. Pat is based in Coryville, Pennsylvania. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back, run down the first half stats, talk a little bit about the second half, tell you what's coming up here on LLHoops.com. You're watching live coverage of Section 5 basketball on LLHoops.com. school community where all students from pre-k to 12 are striving to change the world together 
At Lancaster Mennonite, we serve over 1,000 students from six states and 30 countries across three campuses located in central PA. At each campus, our education program is focused on shaping well-rounded students who achieve excellence in academics, athletics, and fine arts. Our academics program is designed to engage minds. 89% of our students go to a two to four year college or service. We offer AP courses, dual enrollment, and online college courses. Our SAT scores are consistently 140 points above the national average. And with over 150 courses, we offer a well-rounded education for all students. LM Athletics cultivates a team environment. Students can participate in over 45 teams with options for all ages and skill levels. By developing skills, team spirit, and character, our campuses have achieved over 80 section championships through a broad selection of 13 varsity sports. Our fine arts program empowers students to channel their creativity, producing an award-winning drama program and student artwork. We offer a wide variety of unique classes focused in music, drama, and fine arts. Our students become leaders of tomorrow through our outstanding programs and accommodations like full day pre-K and kindergarten, project-based learning, Spanish immersion, makerspace, STEAM, and service learning. We believe there's an LM difference. Our students are dare to dream big and explore together. Visit us at an upcoming open house or schedule a campus tour today. Nunville could shut down who Fisher. I think he would. I think he would. I, I agree with that. Now, one thing about Fisher is he is a little bit unorthodox at the basket, and he draws fouls. You know, like he he takes some like, 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 almost like borderline wild shots, but he draws fouls. And the other thing he does is he gets some of those rebounds right back. And I don't know if it's because that maybe in this section he has a little bit more advantage over a lot of the players. That's probably it. You know what I'm saying? Where he's just used to playing that way. Like, okay, is he going to be able to do that against Hempfield or Warwick or somebody like that? Yeah, yeah. It's a little different animal there. But um, we'll go a minute. Okay. Halftime here at Lancaster Mennonite High School. Eric Thomas Warren Goodling with you as Mennonite has a 43-25 lead over visiting Peckway Valley. We are off until next Thursday after tonight. We'll have a couple of matchups for you next week as we'll head down to Octorera Thursday night. And then Friday night, we're going to be at Conestoga Valley for their matchup with E-Town. That'll be the second time that those two teams already play. Both games are scheduled for a 7.30 tip. And uh, looking forward to love love the gym at Octorera with yeah. the, the Half Moon backboards. That is one of the coolest places to call a game from. And I, I mean, it's like a place you want to go play a pickup game in, right? Yep. Yeah, it has the old school feel to it, and the school's very, very well laid out. And it's it's just a fun place to do a game. Looking forward to that one. And and the coach, Gene Lambert, he just loves hoops. Yes, he, he is. He loves hoops. He's one of the best that we deal with all season long. I will definitely agree with that. He is a uh, He's a pleasure to work with on these games when – we head down that way. So looking forward to that trip. That'll be a lot of fun next week. And then Conestoga Valley, we'll get to see what's under the hood with Jim Shipper and a pair of new coaches, not strangers to the game, but Lee Eckert at E-Town yeah. replaced our friend Rocky Paris and then Jim Shipper at Conestoga Valley. So looking forward to seeing both those games 
next week on Thursday and Friday. So it's a back-to-back -back with you, and then uh, we'll take a couple days off here after this one tonight. Well, this first half, and we've talked about this. I mean, good balance by Mennonite. They've got 12 from Fisher. They have 10 from Hurst. They have four other guys who have scored. Very balanced scoring for them across the board. McFadden, six. Hirsch, six. Weaver gave him four. Shell gave him five. On the flip side for Peckway Valley, you know, we, we knew that they came into this game with the, the, the height disadvantage. Collier's only got six. They really locked him down uh, well. Hit a couple of big threes there at the end of the second quarter, but every time it seemed like they did something to kind of inch their way closer, Mennonite just had an answer for them on the other end. Yeah, they, they're having trouble stopping Mennonite. They're, you know, they're playing zone and man, and, and they're having trouble playing defense at the basket. And also, the ball's getting in interior of their defense, and they're getting some passes out, so some inside-out shooting for Mennonite, and they've been on fire out there from, from the three-point line. They have. It'll be Mennonite ball to start things here in the second half as Hurst will get it off the inbound from McFadden. It's Hurst, Fisher, McFadden, Ritchie, and Hurst, the starting five for the Blazers. This is Hirsch, and throws that one away to Fisher. Yeah, a little deflection by the defense, and then it went off Fisher. And that's a positive for uh, the Braves. They got to stop there. See if they can convert that into points. This is pushing, entering the conversation of mercy rule here in this third quarter. As uh, turn it right back over to Mennonite yep. with less than. Uh, almost 30 seconds gone here in this second half. Yeah, they were looking for the curl cut off the off the back screen to get a back door, and uh, the receiver was a little bit late getting yeah. there. After the game, we'll have our player of the game for you. Hopefully to get a word with that participant after this one is over. Hirsch, McFadden, nice drive right through yep. the defense and lays yep. it in. Yeah, they stepped everybody on the perimeter that time, had a ball screen or two, and uh, McFadden did a nice job finishing that drive. This team is so balanced, and they have tested themselves here early on as cutting to the bucket yeah. is Stoltzfus. I, I'm a little surprised that, that Mennonites got three losses. I know they played tough competition, but the way that their balance is working here, and I know Peckway has struggled, but Mennonites really shown some firepower here tonight. No, they have a nice team, and they, and they seem to know their roles right now. Hurst off that curl, can't connect on the three. Good rebound by Hirsch. McFadden, and they'll get it right back to Hurst, who penetrates, and they whip it around again. The ball moving by Mennonite as McFadden's off the mark, but Hurst was there yep. to stick the rebound yep. back in, and he's fouled. He's a very active player uh, around the basket, whether it be offensive rebound like he just had or his little drives in there where he jump stops, pulls up, and he can pull up on a dime. So he's had he's been impressive this game. 6-1 sophomore, and he's got 12 so far. And he will complete the three-point play. Here comes Jarvis now, 21 point lead for Mennonite as we approach 6.15 to go here in the third quarter. And Peckway Valley got off to a great start here tonight. Collier's threes in and out. They actually led by six at one point, violent collision with Fisher and Stoltzfus. Another turnover for Mennonite. Here comes Collier all the way to the bucket and he lays it in. He's got eight. Yep, Still good well pass. Below his average. Yep, yep, good pass. Finish that one. Hurst bumping with Jarvis there off to McFadden. Fisher thought about the three and he'll take the drive now. They try to go back door. It's denied really well by Peckway yeah, Valley. Yeah, there. good defense that time. Collier to the rack again, switched hands yeah. and he couldn't connect. He wanted the foul. There was a lot of contact. Yeah, there, there. was a lot of contact uh, in the paint there. Oh, what a step through by McFadden. No, Richie, the height yeah, advantage yeah. is to his advantage there. Well, you know, when the guard gets to the gets to the rim, whether he makes it or not, the big guy has a lot of offensive rebounding opportunities when that defense gets flattened out with penetration by the guard. Collier, and his floater right, is good. Very nice Tough shot, very angle. nice shot. And I'm telling you, he's, he's really working hard, and, and you can see his skill set. Fisher. Has it stripped. Another good defensive possession there by Peckway Valley as Lazar 
Or Lazar, rather, is able to keep it alive momentarily, and then he has to throw it off the foot of Hirsch to keep it in bounds. Stay with PV here with 4.50 to play. See a little bit of fight here from Peckway. No, they're really, they're battling hard. I mean, they're, they're doing a nice job of, uh, you know, still trying to play together, scrapping on defense. Collier. And you notice that they're also making sure he's getting the touches here offensively. Well, too. He's a, he's, he, he should be getting them, and, and they're doing a nice job getting him the ball. Let's see if they set something up here for him right now. I mean, he's, he's getting a lot of defensive pressure. There's a good ball screen. Collier again. Yep, and and what, that's what he's doing. He's, he's been able to get to the basket now and get to the foul line. Drawing the contact that time, Declan Hirsch. Collier, uh, Collier, beg your pardon, will shoot two. And he is having to work. This team, uh, uh, this Peckway team is, this is the front end. Yep. Uh, they, I, you, you look at them, they will win a game that they probably shouldn't at some point. This oh, yeah, season, yeah, they, they, there's a lot of fight there. And, and Coach Rittenhouse has done a good job to get them programmed to think, okay, this is what we got to do to keep getting better. And I, I mean that with the utmost respect. I, there, there's going to be a game they should not win that they will somehow sneak one yeah. through as McFadden lays that off the window. He's yep. got 10. I think you can just see their potential to yeah, they, they, got to get the right matchup. Yep. But. Travel by Jarvis that time. Take a look at Peckway's upcoming yep. schedule. Yep. Well, these Section 5 teams, they have to go out and get a number of non-league games because I think they only play a total of uh, 10 league games. That's why you see Mennonite playing Susquehannock, who has a very good guard. Kennerdale, they're playing Kennerdale, who has a very good guard. Fisher. 14 for him tonight. And bounce pass ahead to Pfeiffer. Yep. Jumper on the way, no. Rebound by the big guy, Weaver. And yeah, their, their schedule coming up is loaded with non-league as Fisher gets the board off the miss there. Step back from the foul line, a lot of contact, and he'll go to the line to shoot yep. too. Yeah, they, they've, gotten, uh, they've got Country Day coming up. And then it's Burks Christian. They get their rematch with Columbia the 29th, so that's a week from tonight. And then Mennonite on the 1st. Susquehanna, and then non-league games against Ole Valley, Lancaster County Christian, Kutztown, Octorera, Susquehannock, and Hanover. And they're going to play. They're scheduled to play up until the 20th. So their schedule is set. If yeah. all goes according to plan, they will play up to the 20th, and they'll have ample opportunities to get the wins they need. If you missed the conversation earlier this week, District 3 is going to go with a full bracket for basketball. So that's a good thing to – ensure that they get a full tournament. There was talk maybe that they would go with eight teams. There was speculation, maybe even less. And there's just too many good teams in some of these classifications. They yeah. had to go full now. It's going to be fun with only district champs winning and advancing. But yeah, that, that that's a lot of puts a lot more pressure on every game then. I mean, you always want to win the district title and uh, get to that final. but. This year, the only team that goes to states is that champion. Collier and Shell locked up. Fisher has it. He will lay it up and in. Yeah. <laughs> like he was going to try well, to throw that he, one down. He kept you guessing. He threw like a changeup at the end. Instead of the fastball dunk, it was a changeup layup. 56-32 Mennonite with 3.20 to go in the third. Collier, loader no. Weaver lost the rebound there. Scrap on the floor with yep. Bad Warrior, and looks like that is Zach Coriel who's in there for Mennonite. It is. Yeah, again, good hustle by Peckway Valley. I like that shot by Collier. Just a little bit short on it. It was a nice move. Trying to get somebody off a of curl. There we go with Jarvis up top. 3-10 to go in the third. 
a 24-point comfy zone for Mennonite. As Collier step back, three is good. That was a James Harden move right there. Little dribble, 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 step back shot. Fisher, wraparound pass. Coriel, now it's McFadden, now Shell. Nice dump inside to Weaver, lays it off the window. Timeout called yeah. by Thad Rittenhouse, it'll yeah. be a 30. He's got three left, two 30s and a 60, with 2.43 to go here in the third quarter. Tonight's game is brought to you by Hearts Physical Therapy, a locally owned independent outpatient physical therapy clinic with five convenient locations in Lancaster County. They specialize in orthopedic, rehabilitation, aquatic therapy, post-surgery, sports injuries, and vestibular therapy. Unparalleled patient outcomes and an average net promoter score of 95 reflect their unwavering commitment to their patients. It is your choice where to go for physical therapy. Experience a difference Hearts Physical Therapy can make in your recovery. 58-35 with 2.43 to play here in the third quarter from Lancaster Mennonite High School. How about that last play? They just went right to the low post. He got, he got too deep, and he, and he just made the post move. Yeah, they uh, – that size advantage, I mean, they could exploit that all night, could Mennonite, but they've just opted to stay as balanced as they possibly can offensively here. McAvoy is in there for Peckway Valley. He's got it. Now Stoltzfus. Good recovery defense yeah. by Fisher to knock that out of bounds. Yeah, and, you know, Mennonite, they have three nice sophomores you can build around here the next couple years. So, uh, and, they're, and they're getting varsity experience. Playing together. So they, they have a, a bright future. I know they're going to focus on winning as many games as they can this year. Bad Warrior throws that one in. Now Jarvis, Bad Warrior gets it back. Hit a three in the first half. A drive, nice, nice move drive. to the bucket. Yep. That was awesome. He, he pump faked and just drove to the middle and a little, little hook shot there, layup. Weaver, the facilitator. Yeah, yeah he had one. the right idea there. Oh, how did that stay in bounds? I mean, McAvoy tipped that up the sideline. It just it, trickled it, inside the line and Stoltzfus was able to pick it up. Great job that time by McAvoy. Yeah, it was like that bunt, that bunt you lay down on the third baseline that never went foul. That's right. Hurst. A wild dribble, he'll get rid of it. Coriel, nice bounce pass inside to McFadden. And Weaver gets it, and he is tied up and fouled. Foul is going to be on, I believe it's going to be on yeah, it's going to be on Jarvis. That's his third. It's a two-shot foul here from for Weaver. Weaver on the season is a 33% shooter from the line. First trip there tonight. Another talented sophomore, six foot six. That stroke will round into form here as he gets yeah, older. Yeah, he, he, he can make that. He just needs the reps. Get the reps. You haven't seen. Mennonite go Richie and Weaver at the same time tonight, which I think is interesting too. No, they haven't they haven't done that at all. And I'm not sure that's in their game plan right now. Because they like to have spacing out there that they can have their perimeter guys drive to the basket. And sometimes with two big guys, you don't have that spacing unless one of them can really shoot from the perimeter. McAvoy with another hustle play and he lays the follow in. He's had a good night tonight. He hasn't scored a whole lot, but he's made a couple of Big defensive plays. Has a couple assists and Coriel. One twelve to go here in the third. Shell. Coriel fires. Three yep. pointer is down. That is the second made three of the season for Zach Coriel. And there's another tenth grader getting into the action there. This Mennonite team, they'll lose Fisher when the year's over, but they've got a lot yeah. left in the cupboard. Now I'm already looking at next year's team for this group, and they're going to be pretty good. And, you know, that they're going to want to be good now. Weaver just a Missed little that one. Bounce, yeah. yeah, Yeah, a little bit. Needs to go straight up instead of out. Hurst, now Shell. Coriel back to Shell with 27 seconds to go. Hurst. 
Spin, hangs, fires, yeah. connects. 15 for Camden Hurst tonight. Yep. 63-39, Mennonite with 15 seconds to go. Very good mid-range player. Doesn't settle for those long twos. They're all no, he gets, a high percentage. He gets, gets where he needs to get, and then he elevates and finishes it. Lazar, and that is how the quarter will end. So yep. Mennonite extends its lead. It's 63-39 after three. You're watching live coverage of this Section 5 matchup on LLHoops.com and also our YouTube page. We thank you for tuning in tonight. Remind you that tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Spooky Nook Basketball, the leader for all your basketball needs. Everything from tournaments, leagues, camps, and personal training all at Spooky Nook. So the foul happened on the play there. So they're yeah, shooting the untimed free throws here to close the quarter. Yep, yeah, right at the end it, it happened. Since the clock expired, they don't have to have anybody on the blocks for this one. Lazar makes one of two. Well, you mentioned, you know, looking at next year's team for this Mennonite squad, and one of the hidden things that some of these teams will go through here this season, that, that is a good chance to get younger guys involved, especially, you know, cramming all these games in. Maybe you have to rely on them to give a, a couple of guys some right. breathers, whatever. Yep. But when you figure your rotation out, this is a good year for younger players to get more involved with their teams. We saw the freshman last night, obviously, yep. for LS. Yep. But, you know, it's it's a it's a weird season, and it's going to stay a weird season. Yeah, but it's it a good time to get people in the mix. Absolutely. But, th but these young sophomores are playing a, a good brand of varsity ball right here now. So – you got to give them credit for that, and they're getting the experience, and they're they're doing what Mennonite does. They're playing good defense. They're playing together, and they're having fun. They're having fun. Eight minutes to go here. Is this is still a 23-point lead? 35 is the mercy rule, so Mennonite's not quite at that stage yet. As McFadden will have it. Oh, he got away with a the travel. They call it. Yep, they did call it. Seth Buckwater is on his way to squaring his record here in his third season. He's 28 and 29 overall coming into play tonight. And he has done a good job with this program in his time here. And they are not afraid really to take on anybody. Loose ball on the floor is picked up by Fisher. Nope, they're usually a regular in the LL playoffs and district playoffs, that's for sure. Hirsch. Kill some clock here. Fisher. Good ball movement. Jaden Taylor's in the game number 24 for Mennonite. Jumper by McFadden yep. is good. Now McFadden's had a good game. I mean, not just offensively shooting the ball and scoring, but his floor game has been good. His defense has been good. You know, he's guarding the other team's best player, so he's working on both ends of the floor. Got 12 points here tonight. Now I've been impre impressed with him just running the show and playing defense and playing 100% effort. Collier, there he goes, coming up with it is Taylor. And he carried that one on the way to the bucket. John Ritchie is back out there for Mennonite as well. It's Taylor, Fisher, Hirsch, McFadden, and Ritchie. Peckway counters with Pfeiffer, Collier, Stoltzfus, Lazar, and Bad Warrior. Drive by Lazar, and he can't connect on that one, but he's going to go to the line to shoot two with 6.39 to play. Yep, and his last two times he's gotten to the foul line. That he had scoring opportunities, he takes it right to the basket. Just after 9 o'clock here at Lancaster Mennonite High School. As Lazar misses the front end, subs in for Peckway Valley as Bad Warrior will sit and Jarvis is back. And you know, with Peckway not being a very deep team, this four games in five days now sort of adds up here these next six minutes. So they're gonna have to, 
you know, reach down a little bit harder, which I know they will. They've been doing that all game. Yeah, that's, that's a tough ask in a normal season, but when you don't have the depth and all these games are condensed. Right, then you, you, know, you had three weeks off where you weren't able to practice. So there's a lot of factors on that. Fisher. And you, you gotta wonder too, I mean, we're not in these as Fisher takes the deep three. We're not in these practices. You, you know more of these coaches than I do on a personal level, but I, I mean, are practices even practices at this point? You know, like can, can you do the normal things? I'm not just talking about no, what well, you install and what you work on. I'm talking no. about your physicality and how you go through no, you it. And you know, sometimes uh, less is more, uh, depending on, you know, what kind of game you had the night before and what your next game is and that kind of thing. So you have to, it's sort of like, a, it's n there's no real book to it. You have to have a feel for uh, how much you do and how much you don't do. And what's important, what's the most important thing? Get that in and then move on to the next game. Pfeiffer knocked that shot down for Peckway. What do you think a coach, uh, so let's take an instance like this where you have a Friday game, you're not gonna play Saturday, Sunday. In Mennonite's case, they will play Monday. But what do you what do you do as far as like an install type of thing, or what do you do, what do you work on tomorrow if you're going back in the well, gym? Well, if you come in game? tomorrow, if you're Mennonite, you're probably gonna be shooting foul shots and do, shooting, you know, shooting jump shots, doing some individual work going over the, the game plan for Monday night and then getting them out and telling them to get some rest. That's what you're doing. Hurst. Gets it back, his three is off the front of the rim. Collier with 5.20 to go, nice behind the back dribble to the baseline. They call an offensive foul on him. And he's had some issues with some of the calls here tonight. And well, I, 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 I get that one. I mean, I get, I, I see why, you know, he, he didn't quite understand the call. Like, I'm not sure. Go ahead and say it. <laughs> I'm not sure why he <laughs> called that foul. <laughs> called an offensive foul. That, that surprised me. You weren't going to say it. I was. I'm or just saying I was surprised. I didn't really see it, like. Like Rick Hartle saw it, but you can't get teed up. Don't worry. Yeah, you know you're not you don't have, you're not going to be able to get teed up sitting at the table anymore. Got a foul here on Meta Knight. It's going to be on John Ritchie. At least he'll play it out here with 5:06 to go. Okay, so uh, it's it's interesting. Uh, Davon Collier, he's getting an explanation now from Rick Hartle, and Rick Hartle said he pushed off with his arm. I said, well. He probably got bumped all the way in. I'm defending the player, okay? <laughs> As you should. <laughs> Jarvis, floater, high arcing off the back iron. And Richie couldn't keep the rebound, but Atta he boy. stuffs Collier, but he's a little yep. too aggressive there and fouls him. So Collier's going to get the call there. Second straight foul on Richie, and he'll go to the line to shoot too. But see, that's what I liked, okay? So maybe he had a tough call against him the last time. He just put his nose in there and got a loose ball and went up for her and got an offensive rebound and scored and, made, and made these two foul shots. He's gonna make the second one. But that's what I like, okay? He, he got over it and he kept playing basketball. Good job. Got his explanation, wasn't yep. out of line and asking for it either. Good job. 16 points for Collier here tonight. 65-44, Richie off the window, no, got his own rebound, no, got his own rebound. He had it there momentarily. It's yeah. off a Peckway player and he'll stay with Mennonite. Be a real interesting matchup with Mennonite and Trinity on Monday night. Off the inbound, Richie alone and he scores. Well, Richie finished that. It took him three shots. He, the only thing that happened, he brought his shooting percentage down. Okay, but he, he got a rebound there, but that's good work. I'm glad they ran that play for him because he deserved that basket. Nice job, Richie. Pfeiffer, 4.15 to play. Open jumper for Jarvis on the way is off the mark. Collier the rebound, lost it on the way up. Hurst. Still out there for Mennonite, and he lost it, and McAvoy comes away with it. McAvoy with a little crossover to get away from traffic. Right down the lane off the window, no. Richie one-hands that one. 
And we've got a stoppage here. Looks like Hurst is a little shaken up after the last play as he comes yeah. off the sideline here. And we want to remind you that tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Dan Taylor Family Law. Is your will, durable power of attorney, and living will up to date? If not, you should see LLHoops.com sponsor Daniel K. Taylor. Dan can be reached at 717-945-6212 or see his ad on our website. He can initially speak to you over the phone or meet in his Lancaster office. Home appointments are available for the disabled. 358 to play here from Mennonite. 67-44, Blazers in control. And remember, this was a six-point lead halfway through the first by Peckway Valley. They looked sharp in that opening quarter. Yeah, they were up 12-6 to six at one time. And then Mennonites settled in defensively and got their offense rolling and turned the tables. And they just put the hammer down at the end of that first and have not looked back since. Nice defense by Collier. Strip McFadden there. He lost it on the dribble. And nice he gets pass. it up ahead to McAvoy. McAvoy lays it in. Nice pass. 325 to go. Collier. And oh. he steps in front of that one, but it goes off yep. of Palm and out of bounds. Hirsch is back in for Mennonite. And we'll see. Some new guys in here for Pequay Valley. Chance to take a look at Dylan Knott, number 21. Yeah, and we'll see a couple. Marina. Yep, see a couple guys that played in that JV game. That was a really close game. Three ten to play. Seeing some new guys in there as well for Mennonite. Lazar still out there. He is on the move and lays it in. Good coast to coast drive. He's got five with 250 to go. And this one is not in doubt. A 19 point lead for Mennonite as we hit 240 to play. Floater. Nice by move. Taylor. His first bucket he of the had night. a couple of those in the JV game tonight. Got one in the varsity. It's just the second field goal of the season on the varsity level. San Marina, 5'6 junior, out there for Peckway Valley. Lazar, he's that forearm. But Shell is going to get him with the check there. So it'll be a one on one situation for Lazar. That's the 18th foul on Mennonite, so one-on-one -on -one for Peckway the rest of the way. And Lazar makes the first. Six points for him tonight. Again, next week, we'll be with you Thursday and Friday night. Again, a doubleheader. Be nice to have a couple nights off, recoup, and get back at it. Yeah, we're getting to see all the sections, and that's I think that's real interesting. Lazar makes the second. 69 to 50. That Octorera team, they got off to a late start as well. They have Northern Lebanon tonight. That's a key matchup for them. Elko on Monday night, and then we see them take on Lancaster Catholic. That last year was one of the best basketball games I've seen in two plus seasons of doing these games with LLHoops.com. That was an absolutely remarkable game at Catholic last year. So hopefully it's Half as good next week down at Ackland. That is a trip and a half to make, too. Actually leak into Chester County a little bit. You and I are pretty familiar with that route, though. We got it. Several times a year, we're both headed down that way to our separate beaches. So Shell makes it off the inbound. I took a group, I took some groups of Hemfield players uh, many years ago down to Octorera with Gene Lambert's, uh, you know, fall league and his spring league. And uh, it was a lot of fun. They got a lot of height on that team, but they have got to figure out who's going to be the alpha male there. That's a situation. Josh Wallace is having a good year so far. They actually have four guys who are almost in double figures for Gene Lambert's team. They're one and two right now. But they 
They lost Keith Lambert, who was sensational for his dad's team last year. And I, I got a feeling that they're going to make some noise here this season. They, they got a ton of height on that team. There's a lot of talent there. It's a little untested, but. Yep, I think they'll figure it out. They need a couple more games. Yeah, they, they were beaten by Catholic early on. Their win comes against Donegal, but they lost to uh, Elko in, in Catholic to start things here. Tonight's game is brought to you by the Law Office of Stephen Grosh. When courtroom experience and advocacy matters, we stand by you in your time of need. Probably serving Lancaster County for 15 years. And you look at this Catholic team, too. They're off to a hot start, as expected. Joe Clays this, and... He brings a ton of players back. I mean, Nevin Roman, you got Devin Atkinson, Ross Conway. Uh, I, they they are uh, – uh, Catholic, I don't know how it does it now. They lost to Burks Catholic their last game by two. They already have wins over Northern Lebanon. They already have wins over this Mennonite team and Elko, and their only loss was to Burks Catholic, who by all accounts should be a pretty good team when all is said and done this season. But – what the job that Joe Clazes does with that program is is unbelievable. Yeah, he does a great job, and and you know he, they play good defense. Every year they're going to play good defense. They're going to have a solid base defense. They're going to take you take you out of things that you like to do, and they're going to be fundamentally sound, and they're going to share the ball in offense. So, and they're, they're they expect to win. I mean, they 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 expect to win, and that's how they approach things. Same nice arena. pass, nice curl cut. San Marino with his first field goal as we approach 90 seconds to go here. It's still a 20-point lead for Mennonite. Player of the game afterwards will come your way and take your pick here, sir. Who would you like to have for your player of the game tonight? Three guys that you got in mind. Taylor, who a lot of contact on that three, was rolling out of bounds here, but no call. Say so we go with Cole Fisher, we could go Camden Hurst, we could go Jaden McFadden. You'd be my tiebreaker here. Who are we going with player of the game? Bad Warrior, high arcing three. Yep, that's that's kind of where I was leaning too. So it's, we're gonna yeah. Tell you here in a second who we're going to go after for our player of the game as Taylor. Nice pass to Hirsch off the window and good. Hirsch has had a nice night on the floor. He's got eight. Again, the balance for this Mennonite team is just too much. 19 seconds to go here, and they're going to win this game going away tonight as they will get above 500, four and three overall, and they'll go to three and one in the section. Beckway will fall to one and three and one and two overall. And that'll be fired at the end by Knott, and it's off the mark. Taylor gets the rebound, and that will do it. 74-52, Lancaster Mennonite with the win here tonight. Our player of the game is going to be Jaden McFadden for Lancaster Mennonite, who finished tonight with 12 points. He did a little bit of everything out there for this Blazers team. Well, what I like about his game tonight is he ran the show on offense. And number two, he played defense. He was had to guard the other team's – he had to guard Collier every every minute he was out there. And he did a fabulous job that doing that. So he had an all-around game offensively and defensively, sharing the ball, scoring, and playing defense. Get him to come over here after they're done on the sideline here. Final scoring for – Peckway Valley, they were led tonight by Devin Collier, who had 16 points. Yeah, good balance tonight, but not enough to pick up the upset here tonight over Lancaster Mennonite. 16 points for Devin Collier, 7 for Luke Pfeiffer, uh, 7 for Antonio Lazar, and Devin Stoltzfus had 8. And then 5 for Gary Bad Warrior off the bench. Cole McAvoy had 14. Josh Jarvis had 3 two for San Marina off the bench. For Lancaster Mennonite tonight, they were led by Cole Fisher, who had 17. Camden Hurst had 15. It was Jaden McFadden who had 12. And then eight for David Schell. And 
and six for David Weaver, four for John Ritchie, three for Zach Coriel, and two for Jaden Taylor off the bench. David Shelby mentioned had eight points tonight. Jaden McFadden, though, is going to get set here to join us. He is our, gonna be a little damp, our player of the game here. Jaden, congratulations on a big game tonight. Thank you. Uh, you finished with 12 points. Tell us a little bit about this game. You guys were down early. You were down by six early on, and then your offense started to click, but it was your defense that really stepped it up. Yeah, um, we just wanted to come out, and we picked up our intensity. I think that we just started to come together. We were coming out a little slow, but we all just found a way to work together and just push each other. This team has played a tough schedule already. You've gotten games against Catholic, LS. You know, it's this has been a tough schedule, and you got a tough schedule coming up on Monday night against Trinity, but this team seems like they're, they're kind of rounding into form here a little bit. Yeah, we're, we're just working at it, and every practice we're just pushing each other. We want to be the best. We're trying to make each other better, and that's, that's what we're doing. And by design, tough schedule. I mean, who knows where this season's going to go, but, I mean, to test yourself early on, but then to get a game like this tonight is important for you, too. You, need, you guys needed a little bit of adversity. You got it. You were able to beat it back tonight. Yep. How about the offense itself? Very unselfish, very well balanced. Fisher, Hurst, you guys all seem to have your role and all seem to contribute to this team. Yep, we all like to move the ball to each other and just try to get the best open shots. All right, congratulations on a big win tonight. That's Thank our you. player of the game, Jaden McFadden. Thank you. 12 points tonight. And Lancaster Mennonite goes on to win this one tonight, 74 to 52. Again, the leading scorers here for Mennonite tonight, Cole Fisher was 17, it was Camden Hurst with 15, McFadden had 12, eight for David Shell, six for David Weaver, four for John Ritchie, three for Zach Coriel, and two for Jaden Taylor. So David Shell also, uh, uh, Declan Hirsch, beg your pardon, had eight points. It's a good win for Mennonite tonight. I mean, they needed to have a, a big performance tonight. They got it. Yeah. Good balance. This team looked pretty sharp tonight no, in this win. No, they're, they're establishing their identity. Uh, and, and Coach uh, Buckwaller is establishing his rotation and roles. You know, seven games in, okay, they have a lot to you know, look forward to. I think they're, the pieces are coming together for them. How about Peckway Valley? Where do they go from this now? Well, the first thing they need to do is get some rest, okay. Uh, but, you know, I was impressed with them because – they were scrappy, and, you know, if you watch the whole game, they tried to run their offensive stuff the whole game, and they battled as much as they could on defense. So, you know, uh, they're, they're doing a great job. They, they just are a little bit small. They don't have a lot of big guys. So every bucket they get is going to be hard-earned, and every defensive rebound they get is going to be a team effort. But, no, I, they had a lot of good stuff tonight. Get some rest and get back at it next week. A couple days off for us. We're back at it Thursday night. Trip down to Octorera against Lancaster Catholic, and then we back it up with Friday's game between Etown and Conestoga Valley. Should be a fun week next week as well. You know, it's, uh, it's going to be nice to see those teams, and also as we get into the season now, those, those section, uh, the, the cream of the crop and the sections are going to start rising here. Yep, we'll see it all happen here for you tonight. Uh, it was Lancaster Mennonite who rose to the top here. They win it tonight 74-52. to Big thanks to everybody here. At Mennonite, I can't stress it enough. Again, we were supposed to bring you the Levin and Warwick game. We're unable to do that because of the COVID issue. Mennonite was able to step up right away and accommodate us, so we appreciate that on the fly. We know it's not easy for these ADs, and they're, they're doing the best they possibly can, so we really appreciate the staff here for stepping up to help us and get this game on for you at the last minute. We'll talk to you next Thursday night down at Octorera High School, the final score for the final time here tonight from Lancaster Mennonite. It was the Blazers with a 74-52 to win over Peckway Valley. Thanks for watching us here tonight on LLHoops.com. We'll talk to you next week. Have a great weekend. Take care and bye-bye.
the water for the road. I got my, I brought my old water from last night. I still have it, so. All right, I'm going to hit the road, so. All right, gents. Next Thursday. Thursday. Yes, sir. Next Thursday. Yes. All right, thank you. Take care. Yeah, I'm going to hit the road. Yeah, I'm going to hit the road. stream. Yep. Is he gonna, is, are they going to get us a table next Thursday down there? Because remember last time we sat up in the freaking bleachers? Yeah, I, I, I don't think they're allowing fans at all anymore. Okay. But so I will we'll, ask, we'll have, we'll have yeah, I will ask for a table. But I don't think they're allowing any fans at all.